Hey, Dale. Good to see you. Hey, Keith. Are you I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good, Dale. So your day has started. So how's it going so far? So far, so good. It's my day off. Um, okay. So took my dog for a walk this morning and got prepared to meet with you, man. All good. <laughs> All good here, Dale. So, Daryl, existing to repeat your EP schedule to be released on November 5. Can you tell me a bit about the songwriting and the production behind the EP? Um, so, we did this EP a little bit differently. Um, when the pandemic hit in Austin, we went full lockdown. Um, so, for the most part, we couldn't do anything or go anywhere. Um, you know, and we, and we talked and bounced a lot of ideas back and forth. We're fortunate enough that we can all pretty much track our own parts and stuff like that from home and then bounce them back and forth. Um, so we got a good idea of like what direction we wanted to go with the music um, and some of the lyrics. And then um, we decided I actually uh, had to move back to South Carolina just because I couldn't really afford to stay there with no work. Um, but before I left, I had already cleared out my apartment and, and driven everything over. And I just had minimal stuff left over. Um, and we basically took all of uh, Greg, our guitar player's studio equipment, set it up in, in the apartment. And just we were there for two weeks straight together, just writing. And um, we actually wrote, um, I think it was 12 songs. Uh, and then by the time, you know, you get to the end of it in the writing process, we ended up with these five that we were like, okay, this is, this is really saying what we want to say. And really the EP is about uh, the feelings and emotions you go through in that isolation, uh, you know, being stuck, not being able to see your friends and family, not being able to play music, you know, obviously, you know, emotional health is a, a big issue with a lot of people in that scenario as well, because, you're, you know, you're alone and, you know, loneliness can lead to depression or anxiety, depending on who you are. And, and we really wanted to express those feelings in the, in the best way we know how, which is, is through music. That's good. And that is the concept that you have put behind this EP, right? Absolutely. Sounds yeah, sounds it's, um, it was, we've always been a band about uh, expressing ourselves without limitation um, and that's definitely carried through with this CP as well. Sounds good, Dale. And uh, last month you put up your first single from the EP. Uh, let's drop the cool song and a amazing video. So can you tell me a bit about what you are trying to tell in the video and about the songwriting on this particular song? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's drop is more of like a feel good song on the record. Um, we have a pretty good blend of different heavy styles. But uh, with this song, it was for us, the, that feeling of when we all finally got to be together and, and spend time together, it was like, man, I wish we could do this every day. Like, you know, it really sucks that we can't. And, and, but we wanted to, to ride that high. So with that feeling, it was very much about like us being together and, and uh, how we look out for each other and, and, and bond and, um, it's, like, the video is, is kind of me. It's, it's meant to be a little bit silly. Um, you know, some of us, most of us are in our thirties and we grew up watching videos like, you know, skate videos with big fisheye lenses and, you know, like, like Blink-182 videos and stuff like that, where it, it was just really goofy and a lot of vibrance and energy and stuff. And, and so we kind of wanted to do that. And, uh, the beginning of the video is like a short little scene where we kidnap Mark, our, our newest member. Yeah. Because he actually, he joined the band over a year ago, but it happened right at COVID. So it was like, well, I mean, we could announce this, but, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing, there's no pomp and circumstance. And we really wanted to make sure that um, everybody knew how important it was to us that, that Mark was in the band now. So when it came time to start shooting videos, we did we did that little scene and and actually uh, it's improvised. Uh, Greg, our other guitar player, goes jumps out of the van and tosses Mark in. That wasn't planned. He just did it on a whim, and that really set a good tone for the video. And after that, it was just 
express this feeling of like being able to be around your best friends and, and do what you love. Sounds good, sounds good. And uh, on September 24th, you're planning to release your next single. So what was the, what are the plans and what, what would be that video focused on? Um, that video, that song is called Time Slide. Um, the concept came from uh, the Marvel comic series for Cable. Um, he loses his family and then he time slides through the future to the future to try to fix things. Um, and we like that concept a lot. And so we really kind of played on that. But um, video wise, it's it's mostly performance. Um, blacked out a lot of color strays and stuff like that to just um, match the kind of darkness of the song it's the heaviest song on the ep um you know we're very fortunate with our fans that we have but they they want they like the feel good songs but they want the heavy too so we decided okay it's definitely got to be the heavy one the second time around um and this song it's really less of a, a focus on anything except for that feeling of isolation so all of the shots are solo shots none of the members are shot together we all shot scenes separately um in pitch black so that you really just kind of it almost feels alone um you know emulating that feeling of like you know cable the character losing his family and having having no one to turn to and, and no one to to be with and and so that that's that's where the concept for that one goes and yeah that one will be out friday sounds great sounds good and i i know it's a bit early to ask you this question but uh, since the ep is going to be uh, released on number five do you guys have any plans for the release day um uh, i would right now i'm booking a release show so that we can play the ep in its entirety along with um some other songs you know from 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 our past as well um working on tours currently as well um most likely beginning next year um it the pandemic keeps causing a lot of cancellations and stuff in fact we had we were in talks of trying to book something uh towards the end of the year and the band we wanted to go out with they're in a situation where they're being heavily regulated, so they couldn't even leave their country to come. Um, same thing, we had some shows that we were supposed to play earlier this month with Light the Torch, uh, and they had a similar situation where they had to cancel all their tours because, because of COVID restrictions or you know health issues, stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's a little unfortunate that we're still going through these situations with COVID and stuff because it, kind of halts some of the eagerness that we have to just get out there and start playing again. Um, we're actually playing our first show though, uh, back since February of last year on the 27th. So a few days after that song releases. So we do get to play some of those songs, new songs here and pretty soon in a week, in a week from today. Yeah. So, so you guys are craving to get back on stage and play for play the music for the people. <laughs> yeah, man, that's, <laughs> That is the ultimate goal. Like our, our unified dream is to play music every day, see new places, meet new people, interact with people again. And like, I, I love, like personally, I, I feed off of other people, getting to talk to people and learn their stories and, and, and feel their appreciation for what we do. Like that's the best thing. So by and large, that is exactly what we want. We definitely want to, start playing live again. That sounds good. And you guys started, you and Greg started way back in 2014, the Ansible. And then as live session musicians, you included Darian and Nigel. And now recently Mark has joined the band. So is it gonna be a, a full band member band or still it's still gonna be a live session members and keep changing? No, this is our lineup uh, from here on out. You know, over the years we've, um, We've had some uh, kind of long-term fill-ins or uh, other members and stuff. Uh, and we actually carried on with the, the four piece that we had with uh, myself, Greg, Darian, and Nigel for a couple of years. Um, and really with modern technology, 
you know, we like we we have tracks, we you know, full in ear setup, and everything runs on rails with the tempo, and um, so we just backtracked the second guitar for for years. Um, and actually, what's funny is that last show we played, we played in San Antonio where Mark lives, and um, he um, he came to me. He's an old friend. He's and he has another band that he's a founder, founding member of called Memories and Broken Glass. And we've toured with them and played a lot of shows with them over the years and just been friends with them. Um, but he came to the show, hung out with us all night, and he said, you know, he's like, I'm just gonna say it you know, if you, if you guys decide that you want to fill out the five piece again, like I want to put my name in the hat for that. And it was like one of those moments where you kind of like hit yourself on the head, like, wow, why did I not think about this sooner? Like this would be perfect. Cause, um, you know, it has similar tastes and, and likes in, in music and, and just in life in general. Um, and, and it just, it made so much sense. And, we we were so set for so long with just the four of us and then we rolled that idea around for about a month and you know just to see where he was at and the whole time uh, we've always shared mu new music with him he's one of those people that we can confide in that will give us opinion and and um, good critique and but he just kind of started adding parts and sending them over and be like, hey, maybe you guys should try something like this. Or maybe, what do you think about something like this in this song? And then one day, Greg and I were actually talking on the phone. He's like, dude, Mark has to be in the band. Like all this new music, he's like a part of it. And and he deserves to be here with us and, and we need him here. So so once once we got him squared away, uh, you know, he was there for the, the actual recording sessions in, in my little apartment. And um, he, he heavily contributed to all of this. So, you know, it, it, it makes sense. We're exactly where we're supposed to be. We feel complete. Um, and, and hopefully it stays like that and for the rest of our lives, you know. Sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. And since you have moved out of... Uh, takes us to South Carolina. So how is it, how is it gonna work? So to meet the band, to get back to the music and stuff like, will it be a tough thing for you to travel and going back and forth? It it's definitely an adaptation. Um, I've I've flown back a, a few times already to shoot music videos and 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 whatever else we've had to do. Um, you know, I live I lived there for eight years. I grew up here, but I lived there for eight years. So it's it's a second home for me for sure. It um even honestly even if i wasn't in the band i would make sure that i got back there to see my friends and stuff but um it's it's worked so far you know it's a little taxing financially because you know flights aren't exactly cheap but um i'm very fortunate to have a supportive wife who was like we've got the money just go you need to go you need to be with your friends you need to go play music um and, and so that's that's worked out really well for us so far. I am actually flying back on Thursday uh, and I'll be there for about a week. Uh, my birthday is on the 28th, so I'm going to spend my birthday with my best friends. And, and that's really awesome as well. Amazing. And uh, how has the road been for you guys so far? It's been seven years since you started. So how has, it, has this been? I, it's, there's a lot of ups and downs, of course, you know, I mean, the, the best feeling is being in the van with your, <clears throat> you know, with your best friends and driving, you know, four to six hours to the next town playing a show and doing it over again. Um, you know, and we've had, we've had those tours where we've played in front of 30 people every night. We've had tours where we got to play in front of, you know, 200, 250 people every night. Um, we're, we're still a small band and, uh, most of us are older and you know have families and careers and stuff and we have to be mindful of that when making the decisions of of going out on the road but again we're we're all really fortunate to have supporting like very supportive families that are like get out of my house and go hang out with your friends you know and uh I, you know, I've I've been playing and touring in bands since I was 17 so I don't I don't know I don't know what else I would want to do that would give me the 
the satisfaction that I, that, that I get from that. But, you know, there's ups and downs. Obviously, with our last album, we were signed with uh, Modern Empire Records. Um, good dudes, very supportive. And, um, at, and were trying to help us get out on the road. So we actually had booked about three tours for a collective, I think it was about six weeks total of touring. Um, no, no, eight weeks. Um, and unfortunately, all that went away in a, in a flash. All the momentum we had gained with Modern Empire, with putting out uh, Forever, and, and it, it, it definitely crushes you you know, to, to see all that go away, which, which is even, um, uh, which, which is mirrored in the music from the new EP. And, and we really hope we can get back to that point where we're starting to tour again. We're, we're, you know, starting to make an impact and spread our music out and, and meet, uh, meet more people and do more things. And so, but I, any band, I'm sure you, you have setbacks and then you have extra accomplishments that get you forward a little more and and but in seven years all in all i couldn't be happier with the band it sounds good and uh, would you like to share some of the great moments that you had over the years uh actually one of my favorite moments is our very first show um we greg and i had started the band just the two of us as you said um and we we probably wrote 25 songs or so uh, over over the time before that first album came out and we scrapped a ton of them and then started over with the album um the album was like 16 down to i believe 12 it's been a while um but <clears throat> when that when the first album came out binary dreams there was a local promoter in austin a guy named anthony stevenson he um uh, he owns come and take it live uh, which is definitely a venue that everybody should want to play when you go to Austin. But um, he was he was like, hey, uh, I've got some shows I want you to play. And I was like, hey, sorry, man. Like, we weren't really expecting to put out, like, a live band. We just wanted to write these songs together. And um, he was like, no, no. I, like, I've got the perfect first show for you guys. Get, get a full band together. And so then we got... Um, we got uh, Darian. He lived in Minnesota at the time, and and uh, came. Ended up moving to Austin. Uh, Nigel had recorded with Greg. Greg is a engineer and does production. Uh, he had recorded his old band with Greg before, and he came up and said, "Hey, I want to play bass." Um, and then we had another guitar player who stepped in and, and got us there as well. And then. Uh, he, but Anthony wouldn't tell us who the show was for. Um, and it was in December and this was in May, you know, so that's a six, six month gap. And we're like, what in the world are we even getting ready for, you know? Um, so we, we, we did the grind, you know, we practiced, got everything really tight, got our session right. Um, and got ready. And then about two months before the show, he sends us the flyer and it's with Tesseract, um, the contortionist era in Sky Harbor. And we sold 120 tickets and played in front of like 500 people, our very first show. And like that, that opportunity is once in a lifetime, in my opinion, for a, for a band to play their first show. Now, granted, most of us had experience with playing and stuff, but that's still, that, that was like, you know, I, I can't ever thank him enough for that, but that's, that's definitely my favorite moment. Um, but, uh, you know, we've, we've had some good and bad times too. One time we got offered a place to uh, stay in Louisiana and we go get all settled in and at like four o'clock in the morning, somebody shows up to his house to buy meth and he pulls out like a, a big bag of meth, <laughs> like, you know, crazy stuff happens, man. But, uh, it's it's all fun man it's even even that was just like we got to get out of here you know and and we snuck out and like we were in this like short bus that made a lot of noise and stuff and we just like cranked it up and, and drove you know like get out of here um but and after that of course we laughed about it for 
for hours. We couldn't even go to sleep. It was so funny. Like, how does that even happen? Like, why would you offer to have a band stay at your house and then have like all these crazy, <laughs> all those crazy drugs in your house? What's wrong with you? Um, but yeah, we've, you know, we've got our fair share of stories. That's good. That's good. And uh, what would be the dream for you guys? One more time. What would be the dream for you guys? Oh, the dream would be to tour the world, man. You know, that's the, it's the ultimate goal, just to make an impact on people through music and, 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 and be a positive influence on the world as best as we can, you know, and play music every night and hang out with my best friends and, and see all these places that I've never seen before. Like, you know, I unanimously among all of us, that's definitely what we would like to do and where we would like to be. Sounds good, sounds good, Daryl. And Daryl, talking about uh, the band, like you guys are, you know, don't stick to a particular genre. Like there is always some experimentation in music and you keep diversity in the music. So is it something that you're going to keep it forever or that's going that to be a change in the future? I, I, I mean, I don't see that ever changing, really. Uh, you know, we, I, you know, I'll be 35 in a week and it's like, okay, maybe I can't scream the way that I did, you know, seven years ago when we started, but I'm never going to just stop screaming. And we're always going to use multi-scale guitars tuned really low. Like we just love that vibe and that feel. Um, but we also love really, you know, beautiful sections and stuff. And, and we have a lot of that as well. And really for us, it's about feeling, you know, um, we, we just, this, I, felt a certain way and I wrote this part based on that feeling and then we all get together and work on that you know it's um the one great thing about is while we have a lot of likenesses as far as um you know the things that we're influenced by we also have things that are completely different from each other as influence and I and that really plays out with with the diversity because it doesn't keep us here it keeps us you know big and open um and it's very important to us it's you know i and we we get critiqued about it you know hey your music is a little back and forth and all over the place and it's like well we're a little back and forth and all over the place deal with it you know sounds, sounds good and did it finally what would be the message for the fans around the world uh definitely be kind um you know the climate that we're in right now people are people are mean to each other a, a lot and that's uh that's the opposite of the message that we try to convey so uh if i could put it in plain terms you know be considerate of other people um always be sure to um my dog, sorry, my dog's making noise. Um, always be sure to uh, curate your passions um, and make sure that they're, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like just feed your passion, I guess is a good way to say it. Practice your instrument or your art uh, as much as you possibly can, you know, make time for it because you, it's, it's only going to get harder the older you get, you know. And it's good to do that for yourself because while you should be kind to others, you should definitely be kind to yourself. And, and one of the best ways to do that is to make yourself happy. And, you know, like with me, music, I make sure that I sing every day. Um, it's, it's important because, uh, you know, that's, that's what brings me the most personal happiness. So I, so I make sure that I've got time every day to do that. Sounds good. Sounds good. A great message from you, Daryl. And Daryl, thank, thank you so much for giving me your time today for this interview. And thank you so much for the amazing music that you guys have been giving us over the years. And it's really mm -hmm. a pleasure for the musical fraternity to listen to you guys and for the amazing music. And thanks once again for the time, Daryl. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you. You have a great day ahead, Daryl. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.